Hello, and welcome for this reflection from St. Catherine's as we come to the last week in June. But with the disappointment at the need to delay ending the lockdown, postponing it for a few more weeks could make a big difference in helping us all to get ahead in the race against this virus, which has caused so much death and misery. So now, let us turn to our prayers using a shortened version of Anglican Morning Prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom of faith, hope, and love. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you and our neighbour, now and forever. Amen. The psalm for today is Psalm 42. The first seven verses It's a psalm of, of trust in God. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul. How I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Come, create a spirit, source of life, sustain us, when our hearts are heavy and our wells have run dry. For you are the Father's gifts, with him who is our living water, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading we're following today is from the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. 1 Samuel chapter 17 and reading from verse 41 to 48. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield-bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew near to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, stung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead. And he fell face down on the ground. 
The theme of our prayers and this reflection today is the words of Isaiah that those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. One of the, the most popular stories in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, 300 years earlier than Isaiah, is that of David and Goliath. You can perhaps understand why, as a youngster, it was the one I most enjoyed. King Saul thought that Goliath was too big to fight, but that David, that he was too big to miss. As a youngster who was called Little Griff because I was so short, also with the name David, this story was, was a real hit. It's a lesson of courage, faith, and overcoming what seems impossible. David was the youngest of Jesse's 12 sons, who had been, as Peter Harley reminded us last week, had been anointed by Samuel as the future king of Israel. From that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. One day, the nation of Israel was called to fight the Philistine army. While David's elder brothers went to fight, he stayed back at his dad's farm. The two armies gathered to stand on opposite sides of a deep valley. A great Philistine giant named Goliath, that stood, as the story says, with perhaps something of an exaggeration, at over nine feet tall. Certainly, he was a fearful warrior. And he came to the front of the Palestine battle line each day and mocked the Israelites and their God. Goliath called to them to fight, but King Saul and the Israelites were terrified and did nothing. David had been sent by his dad to visit the front lines and bring back battle news from his elder brothers. David heard Goliath mocking Israel and their God. He was a courageous lad and volunteered to fight Goliath in the power of God's spirit. He persuaded King Saul to let him go and fight Goliath and decided not to wear any of King Saul's armour. He gathered five smooth stones from the brook as we used to sing at Sunday school and just carried his sling shot. Goliath laughed at him. But David responded that even though Goliath had a sword and spear, he came in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel. David put a pebble in his sling and flung it at Goliath, just as he did when he defended the family's flock of sheep from wild animals. The pebble sank into the giant's forehead and he fell. David then picked up Goliath's sword and used it to cut off his head. So the Philistines were defeated, and Israel was victorious through the courage of young David in the power of God's Spirit. Christians believe that God loves us with a love that will never let us go, and enables us to walk in the way of Jesus that his kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven, the way of faith, hope and love. Whatever we have achieved, wherever we may be, we have been given gifts. Our responsibility is to make the most of those, making them fruitful for the benefit of others, for the church, the society and for our world, as well as meaning and purpose for ourselves in following Jesus' way. So let us pray now. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence in these difficult times as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. And so, whatever challenges you must face, remember, God is with you on your journey every step of the way, just as he was with David. So keep alert, persevere, enjoy, laugh, and smile.